Good morning. Good morning. I thank God that uh, that we are here. I thank God for Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. And I thank God for every every one of you that are that are watching or on the conference line. I pray that you are blessed, and I pray that you realize you are blessed especially if you know Jesus Christ, because we have eternal life. Regardless of whatever happens in this world, we are guaranteed to be in the presence of the Lord when this is all said and done. So that's something to be really excited about. I've been listening to everything that's been going on. I heard the president. I heard the governors. I, I've heard everybody. But, you know, I mostly want to hear God. I pray you do, too, because man means well. Uh, but man can lead you to destruction. So I want to hear the voice of God in every move I make and every and, 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 and especially I pray that you'll do the same because because we need to hear God. I mean, uh, they've got different report, reports that are going different ways and and we need to be attentive. We need to be sharp as a serpent, but as humble as a dove. And God's word should go above every word. God's instructions should go above every instruction. So please, brothers and sisters, I'm, I'm, I'm believing God to bless you during this pandemic with a spirit of discernment, a spirit of discernment. I pray you don't get caught up in other people's fears. I, I rebuke the spirit of fear. But I do pray that we can hear the voice of God even as we go about our everyday activity. I pray God will keep you keen and sharp and focused on, on what he is doing. I think it's, I think it's critical now. Uh, uh, this is God has given me a word and I pray that it will bless you and, and you're going to see me go into my notes quite a bit because I want to be precise and exact on what God is saying to you during this time and to me during this time so what I do is I take the time and I write it all out and, and then when I come before you I'm ready to present it as God has given it to me so I don't want to leave anything out I want to do it exactly the way God has revealed it to me that it should be done I want to pray and then I want to I go into the word Heavenly Father, right now we humble ourselves in the name of Jesus Christ, and we thank you, we bless you for life. We thank you, God, that by the stripes of Jesus Christ that we are healed. We thank you, Father God, that we have a relationship with you and that we can hear your voice and that we're in sync with you, Father, even as, as things are going in the directions that they are going and everybody is moving around. We're asking, God, that you give us wisdom and the spirit of discernment quickly, instantly, in the name of Jesus Christ to keep us whole and to keep us well and to keep us alive. I decree that in the name of Jesus. Now, Father God, I'm asking that your will be done. Let it be you and not me. Have your way. Oh, Father God, you have drawn these men, women and children, to hear your voice. So I yield to you, Holy Spirit, that we might hear your voice in the name of Jesus. And Father God, we give you the honor, we give you the glory, we give you the praise in advance for the victory. Amen. Brothers and sisters, I'm going to give you a word out. This is what God has given me. And this is what I've seen. Although we've been in a in a in a quarantine state in a sense, or we've been in a pandemic, or we've been shut down, there there are many benefits in in in, in, in being in going through when you have to go through. And when you really trust and you really believe God, then you understand that all things work together for good to them that love God. Uh, this is something that I have noticed, I've paid attention to that have and I'm gonna give this to you and I want you to hear this in, in by the Spirit. There have been tremendous deliverance from bondage and dangers during this time of quarantine for many and the opposite for others. I want to, I want to do that again so you can get an understanding of what I'm saying here. There have been tremendous deliverance by God through us being quiet and wherever we were and couldn't do some of the things we used to do. There have been a tremendous deliverance from bondage and dangers during this time of quarantine for many. And then, of course, some people have gone in the opposite direction. I'm praying that God will deliver. The hope and prayer is for those of us who have been delivered to realize we have been delivered. The hope and prayer for those of us who have been delivered, who have been delivered, is to realize we have been delivered and give God thanks for that. Our faith must be in God to never return to those bondages and dangers of things we know is not of God. And does not belong in our lives. Let me do that for you again. Our faith must be in God to never return to those bondages, you know, ways or dispositions and dangers of things we know is not of God and does not belong to God. 
Now today I want to I want to share with you a message that God's given me. I want to I want to give this to you, and then this is this is the topic that He's given me: experiencing God's delivering power. And and, and I'm going to add right now in the midst of a pandemic, experiencing God's delivering power in the midst of a pandemic. I want you to go with me to Romans chapter 7. I want you to look at this with me. I'll show you this. And, and God's taking us through the process and helping us to understand. Paul, in, in Romans chapter 7, of course, the whole letter that he wrote to the Romans was about salvation or grace versus the law. And, and what his whole thing was that even if you believe in God being born through the bloodline of Adam, you could not stop sinning without the grace of God, which is Jesus Christ. That's what it's all about. So when we get to chapter 7, he's really deep into his, his teaching, and, uh, and he's using himself as an example, and, 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 but, and it's true concerning all of us. Verse, verse 15 is where we're going to start from. For that which I do, get this in your spirit, for that which I do, I allow not. This is Paul's writing. For that which I do, I allow not. For what I would, that do I not. But what I hate, that do I. I'm talking about deliverance, remember. God's delivering us from the things we hate, the things that we know we shouldn't do, the things that should not be in our lives. Verse 16 says this, If then I do that which I would not, I consent unto the Lord that it is good. Now, I tell you, he's doing a teaching on the Lord versus grace because he was, he was talking to a people who was trying to mix the two, trying to, trying to be up under the law and also trying to accept grace. Either he was dealing with people who wanted to maintain the law, which, which was no good, it was not working anymore. You cannot when you cannot do something, it's not working in your life. So so but but they didn't want to they didn't understand grace. They didn't understand that that God has graced us with his son Jesus Christ, who paid the price for all of our sins and all of our weaknesses and all of our insufficiencies. So they couldn't grab that because they were used to doing things a different kind of way. And so and so are we, as I talk about this being delivered while in a pandemic. It is very powerful to understand that how to stay delivered. But we can't, we have to depend on Christ. Let me, let me get all of this out now. I'm going to go back to verse 15. I'm going to read all the way down to verse 25. I'm going to do it now. It says, for that which, it, which I do, I allow not. For what I would, that do I not. But what I hate, that do I. If then I do that which I would not, I consent unto the law that it is good. Now, then it is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me, for I know what is in me, that is in my flesh. For I know what is in me, that is in my flesh, dwelleth no good thing. For to will, get this, is present with me. I will to do good. But how to perform that which is good, I find not. He's talking about God's good, not our good. He said, I find not. He said in verse 19, for the good that I would, I do not, but the evil which I would not, that I do. Now, if I do that, I would not. It is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. Now, what he's doing is he's making a point. He's saying, okay, I'm, I, I love God. I'm in Christ. He said, but there's another part of me, and, it, and it's really sin, and, and, it's, and it manifests in our flesh. He said, I, in verse 21, he says, I find then a law, a law that when I would do good, evil is present with me. For I delight in the law of God after the inward man. But I see another law in my members, warring against the law of my mind and bringing me into captivity to the law of sin, which is in my members. Let me do that again because that's where we talk. This is where we're going to go here. But I see another law in my members, warring against the law of my mind. I see something inside of me that's fighting against what I know to do is right and bringing me into captivity to the law of sin, which is in my members. In verse 24, which is very critical, he said, Now I see these things about me, I understand these things about me. He said, he said, now, O wretched man that I am, not, you know, lacking the ability to do, who shall deliver me? That's critical because we're talking about God's delivering power. Who shall deliver me from this, from the body of this death? He said, now, you know, I've got something going on in my body that's fighting against who I am. And he said, I thank God. Get this. I thank God. Now, this is the only way we can get deliverance when we see our lives not lining up with the word of God, not. Not, not, not being what God has revealed to us that it can be and should be. He said, he said, I can't do it myself. He said, but I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Jesus Christ our Lord. Jesus Christ. He said, so then with the mind I myself serve the, serve the Lord God, but with the flesh the Lord sin. Now, let me get into this. Deliverance. 
He said, who shall deliver me? Deliverance means this. To take a person or take something, like let's say for instance, if you call and you get your groceries delivered, they're going to take it out of your grocery store and they're going to bring it to your house and, and bring it. And drop. Jesus takes us from our conditions, our circumstances, our situations, and he brings us into the very presence of God and he changes our lives. In him, he brings us into, and then change begins to develop. So he, he delivers when he said, who shall deliver me? And then he said, Jesus Christ. Jesus is the only authorized agent to deliver us out of self-destruction and sin. Jesus is the only one. Nobody else, you can, I can, nobody else. Let me, let, me, let me give you this word, deliverance. Deliverance is defined as a rescue, a rescue from bondage and our danger. Deliverance in the Bible is the acts of God whereby he rescues his people from peril. Peril, peril is, is where there's an immediate danger, there's a possibility of incurring loss or there are challenges that, that your mind go through. There are fears. And, and when, you, when you turn to the Lord, he, he, he can help. Peril means that he can, he can help you from the dangers you don't even know, from the bondage you're not, we're not even aware of. So, guys, get this in, get this in your spirit as I'm, as I'm ministering to you. The ultimate rescue of God, the ultimate delivering power manifested unto mankind from God is Jesus Christ. Why do you say that? Because Jesus Christ came and he lived a life where he was not bound or he was not in bondage. He got through all the tests of life and all the challenges of life and all the difficulties of life. And he and he became the sacrificial lamb for all of mankind. So when we put our faith in Jesus Christ, we're putting our faith in the work that he's already done that we can't do that he'll do in our lives. Okay. Now, I said that deliverance is God's rescuing us from bondage, danger. Bondage and our danger. Bondage is slavery. Let me give you this. Bondage is slavery when you're, when you're caught. You're locked in a place where you really can't, you don't have, the, you, your life is dictated by something, a habit, or circumstances, or something that happened to you, or something you learned, but you hate it. You're like, I know this is not of God. I don't want to do this. Um, and that's what I mean when I say we've been delivered from a lot of things while we were waiting on God and while we are still waiting on God, deliverance is still going forth. But bondage literally means this, that you are in slavery. It, it, the word that's best used is slavery. In other words, you've been mastered by something. You've been mastered by a thinking pattern or a trend of thinking. So, so the word bondage is slavery. This is where someone is controlled by something that they despise but cannot stop doing or someone that they cannot get away from. There is a need for help. When you are controlled by, like, we allow things in our lives. We, we do stuff. We, we become, we allow sin to become our masters. Jesus said, don't go back and make sin your master. We, we allow it from time to time to become our masters. Well, what we, what we must be willing to do is we must be willing to realize that, hey, you know, this is mastering me. I'm not able to live like, I know I don't like this. I don't agree with this. This is not of God, but I'm allowing it. The next word that, 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 I, that I gave you is, is danger. Danger is the consequences of the activities of the bondage. The con like, let's say, for instance, if a person is a, is a swindler, or a thief, or a liar, or a cheat, then there are consequences that you fear. You, you, you're aware of the danger. You're always aware. So, so it's, it's critical to get delivered from the bondage so you can be removed, delivered from the danger. Amen. So, 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 so danger is the consequences of activities of the bondage. When someone is not able to stop doing what they know is wrong or illegal, in, in, in most cases, they are aware of the consequences. There is an awareness of, of the effects and the danger. That is why they desire to be set free from the habit, the situation, and the circumstances. We all have, to have, have looked, get this now in your spirit, we all have looked at one time in our lives, at some point in our lives, We've looked at our lives, and we and we realize that there needs to be changes. I, you know, I need to make some adjustments. This is not the way I want to live. And then we can do a we can account we can do a we can do a calculation based on scripture because God said, if you do this, this will happen. And then so we are praying to God for something to happen. We don't see it happening, 
And then we, we, it's hard for us to, the, the work of sin is to, to keep us in denial. It's hard for us to face like, okay, this is the reason this is not happening. We'll, we'll conclude that it ain't for me. We'll conclude that maybe God never ordained that. Maybe I read it wrong. Rather than saying, okay, God, there is something that is that I'm into that is a way about me that's hindering me from moving forward. I need your help. So, so we, so we get to that place where, where we, where we look at our lives, and then we desire to be different. At that point, we come to, to the realization we have, we have thought patterns and ways which conflict with who we are, or who we expect to be, of what we say we are, who we say we are, of what we say we are. We have, we have, it's, it's we're in conflict. It's not, it's like it's not true. So it brings us to the conclusion that that we need to make drastic changes. Like I want to line up with who I say I am. I want to be who I. If, if I say I'm a Christian, I want to live it. I want to see it manifested through my life. If I say I believe I'm a child of God, I want the character of God to manifest in my life. And sometimes we don't see that. I mean, if we are honest about ourselves, we, you know, life can be so so challenging at times. So overwhelming that it can push you out of character and different things can come in your life that doesn't belong to you and they don't belong to God. And so then we're there, there. And so then we're, we're caught up, we're, we're in bondage, we're in slavery. We don't want to do it anymore. You know, if, if a person is doing crack cocaine, they don't want to do crack. A person shooting up heroin, they don't want to do heroin. Folks spending all their money on any kind of drugs or, or, or sexual paralysis or, or whatever they're doing. They don't want to keep doing that. They don't want to keep putting their lives in danger. But then they keep doing it, not because they want you any longer. It's because they're caught. They're in bondage. They're in a trap. It's become their master. So, so what do we do? We do. We, 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 uh, we, have to, we come to these conclusions. We got to make changes. Then we determine. We determine and convince that we can make these changes on our own. We, we start trying to tell everybody, I'm not going to do that anymore. After we hurt somebody by doing what we did, or after they call us to say, it's best. Can I tell you something, love brothers and sisters? Listen to me. It is best to stop before it hurts somebody. Then it's best when you've done wrong. Don't go confess to the people and hurting people. They weren't there when you made the decision to do crazy. Now all of a sudden you got a notion you want to go and hurt everybody. That's, that's all. That's all that's doing is Satan is spreading his wings. He's gathering in more folk into his trap of abundance and hurt and misery and bitterness. No, no, no. You do stuff. You go to God in prayer. And you tell God about it and get delivered on your own. Leave folk alone. Amen. Get best God with that. Now, back to what I'm saying to you. Even when we, when we realize these things are there, we, we try and make these genuine efforts to, to, to make various adjustments. We sometimes don't even know which adjustments. Let me tell you how powerful the workings are in the spirit realm. We don't always know what to do in order to make something happen. God knows. Jesus knows, the Holy Spirit knows, but we don't really know. Because think about this. If a person is doing crack, they're using all their money, they've lost everything, they don't have anything, are they getting high, are they, are they you know, in sexual paralysis where they might have contracted some kind of disease, they don't want to keep doing that. Why do they keep doing it? Because they don't know how to stop. We don't know sometimes, brothers and sisters. So what we have to do is we have to, we have to, we have to find a way we have, to, we have to find a way to stop. We have to realize that the only way that it can be done, get this, this is help. It's, the only way it can be done is by the delivery power of God. The, the, get that? The only way I can come out of these habits, thought trends, actions, interactions that are devastating to me as a believer, as one who seeks victory in Christ, I have to realize that I need God's deliverance. I have to conclude I need God's deliverance. Let me give you this now. The question is this. This is the question I got. What does that look like? What, what does it look like when, when I ask God for his delivering power? What do, how, how does it work? Well, I, I, I've, I've written this. It looks like God, get this, in the person of the Holy Spirit, living in me, bringing about the changes I cannot bring about without him. And let me give it to you again. What does it look like? You know, you sort of whack. Some people are caught up in pride. They don't even know that pride, God hates pride. It speaks in his nostrils. Arrogance. It keeps you out of a, a happy place, a blessed place. You, you look down at, like we have a tendency when God has blessed us and we get a little money, a little something, something we have a tendency to look down at others. You, that's not a good thing, brothers and sisters, but you can get such a habit of it, of fear, and it comes from fear. You can get in such a habit of it. 
that it can really throw your life out of whack. And you're not even conscious of it. So, so I'm asking God to help us with all of that. But let me get back to this now. So, so the way out is that, that we, we get our deliverance. The question was asked, what does it look like? Well, it looks like God in the person of the Holy Spirit living in me, bringing about the changes I cannot bring about without him. I'll do it again because that's important. What does it look like? It looks like God in the person of the Holy Spirit living in me, bringing about the changes I cannot bring about without God. We yield to the Holy Spirit as he lead us and guide us out of who we are into who he is and who he created us to be. We yield. And I've taught a lot about yielding to the Holy Spirit. But we yield to the Holy Spirit as he leads us and guides us out of who we are into who he is in us and who we were created to be or who we were called to be when God saved our souls. Now, this is what's critical. We must pay attention when, when God is bringing us out because what we'll do is we begin to see changes in our lives. We begin to see changes in the way we think. We begin to see changes in the way we act. We begin to see changes in the way we interact. Our interests will change. Our value system will change. But all of that goes to God. So we have to pay attention to the fact that we are, we're beginning to pay attention as you begin to see little changes in your life. This is what it looks like as well. It looks like peace, nothing missing, and joy. Little bit by little bit, you will begin to experience, you begin to smile again, you begin to be happy again. Scripture is clear. Over in Galatians chapter 5, it says this, in verse 16 to 17, This I say then, walk in the Spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. That's the saying that Paul was talking about. For the flesh lusts against the Spirit. The Spirit is in us, leading and guiding and taking us to another place. That's why we have to stay in communication. And the Spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary, the one to the other, so that you cannot do the things that you would. Let me do that again. Let me do that again. 16 and 17, Galatians chapter 5. This I say then. Walk in the spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusts against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh, and these are contrary. So inside of a Paul, inside of us, Paul was talking about, you know, who shall deliver me from this old wretched man that I am? Because he was saying, I see the spirit, a will to do God's will, a desire to do God's will. I, I'm conscious of that, but I see something else in my member. And he said, in my flesh there is sin. Flesh wills against the spirit. So you so 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 the deliverance is my trust. This is this is important. I have to stop trusting what I've been trusting. My feelings, what I think is right, or how I think somebody's treating me, what's what's the motive behind all that. Stop on, get your mind, try ask the Holy Spirit to help me. Holy Spirit, help me. Help me not to go through all that trauma and all those trips. Stop tripping so much. Help me. You have to have real decent, real talks. When you see yourself acting a little crazy or going off la la land. You have to have you have to really have concentration, concentrated, concentrated con conversation with God. You have to say, God, help me, help me, God, not to go to la la land. Help me not to go back to thinking like I was thinking. Help me not. And you have to do it every day, every moment, every time you you think about it, do it. And then then you'll start seeing changes. You'll grow in the spirit. So 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 it looks like God working on the inside of us, making a difference on the outside of us. Let me do let me do let me do sixteen seventeen again. I'm going to go to Philippians four thirteen. It says, "This I say then, walk in the spirit." This is Galatians five. 16 to 17. This I say then, walk in the spirit and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Verse 17 says, for the flesh lusts against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh and these are contrary the one to the other so that you cannot do the things that you would. That's it. Now in Philippians chapter 4 verse 13 gives us help, greater help. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. You have to really rely, see, see the father the Son and the Holy Spirit are one. The Holy Spirit indwells us with communication directly from Christ, Christ directly from the Father, and they are hooking us up. They're blessed. They're blessing us to be what God's called, who He called us to be. To have a life, to have a blessed life, to, to experience God's power, to make changes in our family and in, in our environment and our circumstances. Okay, now the next thought is this: How can I get the delivering power of God? to deliver me? How can I get this delivering power to deliver me? We can get God's delivering power by asking God to help us. By asking God to help us. Now, now, when you ask God for something, brothers and sisters, you must do two things. You must believe that you have it, and then you must trust God 
to manifest it in you continually. Believe I have it and trust God to manifest it in me continually. So we must, we can, we, the, the way we can get it in us and see it operating through us is we must ask God. We must trust that, that he has done it. He will do it continuously. And then we must anticipate God's help. We must anticipate God's help. We must ask God. We must receive it by trusting that we have it. Then we have to anticipate God moving and making the changes in us. Now, 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 now then, after that, we must recognize the differences God is bringing about in our lives. We have to pay attention. Like people say, you know, you're nice. So don't pay them no attention because they'll make you mad the next minute. You, it's not you anyway. So, you know, I give God the glory for that. But I want to go to John. Would you go with me to John? To John. Now, now I said this before, I, before I'm going to John. We, we must recognize the differences God is bringing into our lives. John 15, verse 7. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, this is the help of God, you shall ask what you will and it shall be done. So you ask God to deliver. You ask God for the manifestation of his delivering power in your life. God is well able to do it. It's well able, well able to do it. Let me get, let me get that to you again. John 15, 15, 15, chapter 15, verse 7. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you shall ask what you will and it shall be done unto you. Now, this is how I recognize the delivering power of God in my life. Get this. This is how I recognize the delivering power in my life. I must realize what I was doing. You know, if I was nasty, if I was cold, if I was drunk, if I was high, if I was sexual immoral, if I was a liar, if I was a deceiver, everybody got some of that. Don't, 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 don't think you're exempt. Everybody got some of that. You could, it could be in your mind. You, you lie to yourself. <laughs> you know. But anyway, so here it is. So this is how I recognize the living power of God in my life. I must realize what I was doing, and I am no longer doing it. When you, when, you know, you, you pray to God and you say, God, I really need you to help me with this lying. I want you to, I want to be delivered from, I, I want you to help me with this poverty. I want you to deliver me from this fear. I need you. So you start, you start paying attention when you are not, fe- I remember when I, when I prayed to God about fearfulness. And then I, because there's so many things that can come at you when you're conscious of how life really is. And then I started recognizing that God had delivered me from that fear. His very presence, his very presence cast out fear because he, his love, the fear of God's love cast. But anyway, so you, you have to start paying attention that you're not doing it anymore. Then you have to think, maybe I have not completely stopped, get this now, yet I'm doing better. Either I'm stop, I've stopped, I'm do, either I'm doing better. If you're doing better a little bit, thank God for every little good better you do. <laughs> every little good better you do. Thank God for that. <laughs> Therefore, I thank God for what he has done and what he will finish. Begin to give God praise. Just, just really, this is how you get cus, um, uh, cus, uh, concreted in. You get concreted into it when you start thanking God and giving him thanks. Oh, I bless you. Glory, glory to God. Thank you that that didn't happen anymore. Thank you that that's out of my life. While you're in this time where you're, where you're, don't go back to what you were doing. Believe God that you are delivered. If you hadn't done it in 60 days, you don't have to do it anymore. They say there's a principle that, that says that after 21 days, you're, done, you're free from anything. So it goes on and says this. This is what God's giving me. I'm giving it all to you. Therefore, I thank God for what he has done and what he will finish. Now, how do I know when I am delivered by the power of God versus my own efforts? We know by the difference we see in our thought patterns. You know you couldn't have recreated yourself and came up with these new thought patterns. So God did something. Our activities after we ask God for help. We give God the credit and we give God the glory by praising him for doing it. That, that's important. They give God the glory, give God, give God the credit. A lot of times people will say, they'll see you doing better than this. Well, I pray for you. Ignore them. Ignore them. They ain't God. They should have prayed to God in secret so they could get their reward. Don't, don't share God's glory with men. They don't deserve it. No, if they say they pray for us, they say, thank you. Keep on moving. Don't, don't let it get in here. Don't let it get in here. God did it. God moved on them to pray for you. He calls them, God told, told us as believers, you pray to me in secret. Pray you one for another. Pray for me in secret. I'll reward you openly. When you pray for other people and they do better, and if you've been in sin with somebody and you, you're getting your deliverance, you get, pray for them. Pray for them. Don't call them up and say, you know what, I just prayed for you. No, no, don't take God's glory. That's why you, you, you don't never, 
when you take God's glory, you never see the blessings of God for what you've done. I'll say it to you again. When you steal God's glory by wanting people to acknowledge you've done something on their behalf, you never receive the promises and the blessings behind that obedient act of praying for somebody. You're just left in a situation where you're getting the glory from it. You want the glory from God. You want the reward from God. So don't walk around and say, well, I prayed for you. I, I prayed hard for you. Oh, whatever. Listen, thank you for praying for me, but the glory go to God because he's the one put breath in your body and put me on your mind to pray for me. That's not arrogance. That's getting the whole body in shape. That's getting all of us right. That's telling us what we need to do. Stop taking folks' glory. Every time, I, sometimes mm, something happens good, and you hear somebody say, "Yeah, I did this." Stop telling people what you did behind the scene. Tell you say, "God, thank you for allowing me to do it. Thank you for allowing me. Thank you for what I see now. Keep them up. Thank you for you doing that miracle. Thank you for delivering. Thank you for that healing. Thank you for setting them free, God. Thank you that no longer doing drugs. You keep wondering, well, I don't know why. You know, they keep. I keep praying for them because you want the glory. Stop wanting God's glory. <laughs> Bless God for that. Now." Let me get let me get let me get finished here. So we know by the differences in our pastor, we have to give God all the credit and the glory by praising Him. Give it to God. Give it to God. Give it to God. Give it to God. We share God's. And, and I'm gonna tell you, if somebody come up and say, "I prayed for you. I did this." Tell them, say, "You know what? I give God all the glory. I give God all the glory. You give God all the. Let's give God all the glory. Let's take a moment. Just tell them, let's give God all the glory right now in the name of Jesus. I guarantee you, brothers and sisters." If you pray for people and you and, and, and don't try to get the glory, you'll see them deliver. You'll steal their deliverance when they give you the glory. You don't want to steal. You pray for your children to stop doing dope, and all of a sudden, you go and die. You know what? I'm so glad you stopped. They, they, I prayed for it. Next thing you know, they back. Oh, I don't know what happened. Because you wanted God. You took God's glory. Stay out of it. You watch God work, and he'll do it. I've seen God do some things in our lives, in our family lives, that are amazing. But I never called one of my children and said, you know what? I cried out. To God. And I did. I, I've had to do it. You have to. But that's between me and God. And you don't have to worry about that. You, 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 don't, you don't need that kind of growth. God needs to grow because he's the only. See, no matter what he used me to do, I'm still nothing but a man. God is the one that's got the power to make a difference. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. So, so we got to give God the glory. We, we share God's delivering. We, we, we share God's delivering power when we give him the glory and we see, see things happening in our lives and other people's lives. That's what we do next. We share God's delivering power with others who, who, who we've encountered are going through difficulties of bondage and dangers. Like if, if you know somebody and they got some issues, some deep issues, you can talk to them about their issues all you want to. And all you're going to do is get caught up in that spirit. That, that spirit's going to transfer. No, but if you get in the presence of God and say, God, I really see they strung out on dope. Uh, you, you can't go tell nobody who's strung out on dope they're strung out on dope. They don't want to hear that. Oh God, I really see that they really do steal a lot. Let's say if you walk out the room and you come back and something gone, they, <laughs> you need to say, God, they, they, we got a thief in my in the house. I don't care if it is your family. I don't care if it's your mother, your father. They love I'm saying this. Don't get offended. It could be your husband, your wife, your children. Regardless of who it is, pray for them and watch God do a miracle of deliverance in their lives. So we must pray to God in secret. We, we do not need to tell folk, I was praying for you. That can hinder their deliverance because it could cause them to want to give you the glory that only belongs to God. Bless God with that. Now, I want to give you these scriptures, and then I want you to have them. I want to leave them with you. And then we're going to pray. We're going to do our offering. We're going to pray. We're going to offer the salvation. We're going to do our offering. We're going to be done. These are the scriptures. Psalms 34 and 17. Write that. Psalms 34 and 17. Psalms 34 and 17. When the righteous cry for help, the Lord hears and delivers them out of all their troubles. Psalms 107, verse 6. Psalms 107, verse 6. Psalms 107, verse 6. Then they cried to the Lord in their trouble, and he delivered them from their distresses. Psalms 50, chapter 50, verse 15. Psalms 50, verse 15. Psalms 50, verse 15. And call upon me in the day of trouble. I will deliver you, and you shall glorify me. 2 Samuel 22 and 2. 2 Samuel 22 and 2. 2 Samuel 22 and 2. He said, the Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer. Bless God for that one. Thank you, Jesus. Psalms 34 and 4. Psalms 34 and 4. Psalms 34 and 4. Psalms 34 and 4. Get this one. I sought the Lord. He answered me and delivered me from all my fears. Bless God. Hallelujah. Second Peter. Second Peter 2 9. 
2 Peter 2.9. 2 Peter 2.9. Then the Lord knows how to rescue the godly from trials and to keep the unrighteous under punishment until the day of judgment. Some things you just don't have to worry about. Psalms 40, verse 13. Chapter 40, verse 13. Psalms 40, 13. Be pleased, O Lord, to deliver me. O Lord, make haste to help me. Galatians 5, 1. This is it. 5, 1. Stand fast, therefore. Galatians 5, 1. Galatians 5, 1. Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ has made us free, and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Bless God. God is our way out. His ultimate delivering power is manifested in Jesus Christ. When we put our faith in Christ, when we put all of our faith in the work that Jesus has done and get an understanding of what that means, we begin to see deliverance in our own lives, not only in our lives, but in those that we love. But listen to me very carefully at this point, brothers and sisters. In order to put our faith in Christ, we must confess him as Lord. We must believe that he is the Son of God and that he did all the things that the Bible says that he did, which he did. We must put our confidence in him. And then when we put our confidence in him, then we can see the blessings of God. Now, how do we do that? Well, the Bible says, confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus. Believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead. The word confess means I agree. This is for salvation of our soul. I agree with you, God. I agree with your word pertaining to your dear son, Jesus Christ. Now, Father God, I thank you. I want you to forgive me for my sins and my trespasses. Jesus, please come into my life. Be my Lord. Be my Savior. I receive you right now. I receive you by faith as my Lord and Savior into my life. Father God, I do believe that you raised him from the dead. Therefore, I claim the eternal life. Now, Father God, I need you to baptize me in the Holy Spirit. I thank you for baptizing me, and I give you the honor, and I give you the glory, and I give you the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, brothers and sisters, it's important that we stay faithful and that we stay committed to God. A lot of times, you know, we mumble and we complain, but without God, there are a lot of things that just wouldn't happen in your life. And because we neglect some of the principles and the oracles of God, we are having a lot of lack in our lives. The Bible literally says that the tithe, the tithe is 10% of my earnings. They belong to the Lord. They are holy. They belong to the Lord. So what we should do, we should thank God for entrusting us with his tithe. We should thank God for entrusting us by giving our tithe. Now, I've noticed some of the brothers and sisters have been a little slack, and I know it's a challenging time, but stay faithful to God. Don't worry about passion. Don't worry about this. Don't worry. Just stay faithful to God. Keep your relationship with God real. Keep, keep doing, the, keep hearing the word, going, reading and studying and praying and professing and, and keep your giving going. Keep giving your time. You belong to God is holy. Keep giving your offerings. Being obedient to God. Keep letting the devil know in circumstances know, I still trust God. I still believe God. I'm still going to live by the principles of God and watch God bless your life. Now, it's time for you to give. Let me pray over your giving. Heavenly Father, I thank you and I bless you. And glorify you. We bless you. We bless you, Father God, for entrusting us. Glory to God. We bless you for entrusting us with the tithe and the offering. We bless you, God. Now, Father God, allow us, help us to be faithful. Give us an understanding of the principle of giving, Father God, in the name of Jesus Christ. And to those that give and that are faithful, I lift them up and decree, God, that they are blessed according to your word, Father God. And I decree that there is no lack according to your word. Wherever there is lack, I rebuke it in the name of Jesus Christ. And Father God, we give you the honor and we give you the glory for the victory in all of our lives. We thank you that we are healed that we are delivered, that we are whole, that we are alive. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Be blessed, brothers and sisters. We'll do it again next week. I love you. Thank God for you.